Kia ora. Uh, I'm just going to quickly go over how to import a, a drawing or entourage from a website like Pimp My Drawing and then how to adjust it and make it work. So uh, I've just found uh, this one. You want to bring it, uh, download it as a DWG file. So I can just click and it will automatically download. Uh, so if I come to Rhino, um, there's two places we can import it. Uh, one directly into uh, the layout page, or in some cases you want to bring it into uh, the model space. So if we just go up to File, Import, so we can import it. Uh, here's the um, drawing, so I can click on that. Open. There's a few settings you want to be aware of here. Um, these all depend on what uh, or how the drawing was made uh, and what units it was used. So in the model space, uh, we're just going to start with meters because that's what we've got. Um, but sometimes that can bring different things in. So let's just try that and see what happens. Um, and you can see it's massive. Uh, so that's the wrong scale. So uh, there's a couple ways we could scale it within um, Rhino, but I just want to delete that, uh, come back in, and try another one. So file, import, so bring that in again, open. So I'm going to set this to, I'm going to try millimetres, uh, you might want to try centimetres just depending, like I said it all depends on what it's, what units it was drawn in. So I'm going to try millimetres and just see, and that you can see that's now in the right uh, size or um, units. So we're still in metres for what we're doing, um, you can see we can uh, use if you have the gumball open we can bring that around I can hold down shift and it will lock see how that locks so by holding down shift uh, and I'm going to then do oh, so hang on. let's just select all that uh, and then I can rotate that around there oh did too far Yeah. Okay, so then we also want to move that, don't we? You can also see that it's not grouped, so uh, it's quite a good idea to maybe group some of these things. So at the moment it's on those layers. I'm going to just turn all of these off. I'm going to set I'm going to set the outer as my current layer. Uh, I'm going to turn the inner back on and just turn the front off. So we can sort of see this a little bit easier. Uh, I'm going to move, so I'm going to type move and come over. I've got my O snaps on and end so I can get the end point there. Well, this is not quite what I wanted. Uh, Let's just try again. Move. So then we let's just like move uh, base point. Why is it going up to the? So let's just turn projected off. Maybe. Yeah, that's a bit better. Two still vertex. Turn a few of them off. That's probably close enough. We might be able to get it down here. Yeah. So now you can see I've got a bit more control uh, where I'm going. So I'm just going to sort of bring it over to the end. It's quite a good idea to just double check in all the views. So we can see here we've got it sort of close to where we want. Uh, now you can see it's also um, a whole lot of different colours. So we can go over to the layers palette, double click on this and we can change the colour. So I actually want a dark grey I think, 
uh, and then apply. So you can see that outside has gone dark grey. Uh, the inner, I want to make that. I'm going to make that grey, maybe. Apply. So you can see uh, that it's starting to to work. Um, if we just turn this back on, we get a bit of sense of where that is. Let's just go back to here. So we've got it next to, but you can see that it's transparent, um, it's not sort of solid. So I want to um, change that. So I'm going to hatch the middle. So I'm going to type hatch, select the outside curves. Um, and it's important to note that I've set uh, the default or the, the current layer, so the little tick here, to be on the outer. Uh, if I have it on another layer, it means whatever I create will be on that layer. So it's a good idea to make sure you put it on the right layer. You can always change it afterwards in the property layers, but I'm just doing it beforehand, so I've set it to the right place. And then uh, I want to hatch that. So I've selected the curves, push, return, or enter. And then it says click inside region to keep. So I want to keep on the inside. Uh, And then I can push return and then it comes up with this little box so by default this will be by layer um, and you can see it's got the gray layer coming in but I actually want it to be a little bit transparent so um, uh, you can see because I've got a dark gray it's come through as that um, so if you want it to be the same color as a layer that's one thing here I want a little bit more control, so I can go down to other, and then this window comes up, uh, and I can go um, whatever color I want, so I might even go like a brown or a gold, uh, a yellow color, I'm just making things up. Then this bar down the bottom is what's called the alpha channel. We can then uh, change the transparency of this, so you can see just here how that's changing. So if I go right up, it's a solid color and further down. So I want it to be somewhere around there. So if I go apply, you can see now um, and apply. I've got uh, an orange person. I want to then also group this so that everything's uh, sort of organized. So if I go group, And that's created a group. So if I click on it, you can see it's got all of that as one. Um, yeah. And you can see some of the line work as well, I think. Yeah, so you can see the light lines as well. It's a little bit hard to see, but um, you can definitely see those. So if I change the color of the inner line work, just so we can see it. Yeah. You can see now that the, the those lines are, are set through. I'm just going to delete that because I like the, the, the grey. Um, and because it's all grouped, I can come into here and then just move this over to something like that. Um, and it, it's a way of testing, so you can see... Uh, my the height of this is probably a little bit low so i might need to tweak and change that um, and uh, go from there uh, i think that's the main main things hopefully that's helpful